Greetings, folks. Welcome back to another episode of my review channel. Um, it's currently titled Books and Buds, but I'm seriously thinking about changing it to Bad Reviews of Good Books because ah, I've got room for improvement, and until then, I just uh, think it'd be funny to just say it like it is. Sometimes I review books poorly. What are you going to do? I'm not in front of a classroom here looking to get an A+. I'm just giving you my opinions. With that said, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately because Burning Bush has just been swamped. So I spent a lot of my time in the gardens, a lot of time driving between deliveries to our patients, delivering medical cannabis. And it's just convenient to listen to audiobooks because I don't have the time to read like I used to. With that said, I was looking for someone to kind of replace Dan Brown because Dan Brown doesn't release a, a lot of books. He's only released, I think, seven now after the release of Origin. But I love his, his kind of conspiracy style of thriller novel. And one of my favorite books by him, which I'll probably be reviewing sooner or later, was Deception Point. It was a political thriller, and I was just completely blown away by it. I thought it was a wonderful read. So that's how I stumbled upon Day Zero by Mark Cameron. It's also kind of a conspiracy political thriller. And I, I read the, I read the, you know, the blurb about what the book was about, and I said, let's try it. So upon reading it, or listening to it, I should say, I got a little intrigued because I'm always intrigued by the, the lives of writers. Most of them, I can just picture them kind of alone in their office, a bit of an introvert, just using their imaginations to discover some of these scenes because the book takes place in, in Pakistan, it takes place in, in, in Manhattan, it takes place in Alaska. I mean, it's just bouncing from one place to the next. It's like, that's one heck of an imagination. I mean, it's, they just Google searching images of these places and, and, and just filling in the blanks as they go. Well, not Mark Cameron. Uh, he spent 29 years in law enforcement and his assignments have taken him from rural Alaska to Manhattan from Canada to Mexico and all the points in between. He has a second degree belt in jujitsu. And, 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 and when you read the character in this book, Jericho Quinn, it's almost like this guy Mark Cameron's writing about himself. And he currently lives in rural Alaska. So it's like, geez, okay, I guess he didn't have to Google these places. He's been to them. So I think that's really cool and just unusual of a writer. But what better person to write a, a book like this? So, the main character, as I said, is Jericho Quinn. Now, he's one of these military guys that just, he, he knows a lot about what's going on in the inner world of politics and, and uh, espionage and everything else. And the new president of America, of the United States, rose to power with some really shady, shady behavior responsible for the assassination of the president before him. And so him and his, his new administration, the new vice president, they're really all out to sell out the United States. And Jericho Quinn's one of the very few people left alive who was aware of the president's behavior. So there is a whole plethora of paid assassins out to get him. Well, eventually they find him in, in Alaska. And I don't mind giving away too much of the plot because this is pretty much where it begins in Alaska after a short intro chapter in Pakistan where we meet another character. Um, so one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden, Jericho and, and uh, his good buddy have to, an Eskimo up there in Alaska who went to high school, would have to get out of the situation, and they end up um, <clears throat> defeating some of these assassins, only to realize there's a steady flow of them still uh, on their way to finish the job if the, if the previous assassins failed, which they did. So he goes on a crazy plane ride. Some 16-year-old girl is operating this little dinghy of a plane in the horrible weather of an Alaskan winter, and they barely escape with their lives. Only so Jericho can get on a plane and try to escape the country and fly to Russia. Now, while this story is taking place, there's a million other stories taking place of a million other characters that are all intertwined around Jericho. So, I mean, we got his wife with his, his ex-wife with his daughter, his current girlfriend, a bunch of his good friends that he used to serve in the military with that still have a heck of a nice connection with. We have his, his father and his brothers. 
So each one of these people have their own story. And at the end of the, the, the each chapter starts with the action just building, and it leaves you with a cliffhanger. And you're like, well, what happens next? So you flip the page, and it's someone else's story, all leading up to this great climax at the end. But pretty much what happens, he gets on this giant Airbus heading to, heading to Russia, while his other nonsense is going on with his family and friends also trying to escape near-death experiences in an attempt to help him out. Well, there's this man from Pakistan, which we kind of get a taste of who this person is at the very beginning chapter I had mentioned, who is planting a crew of, of individuals on this plane who are going to bomb it. They each have a little tiny bit of material that can go unnoticed from TSA, but together this group of people get together and uh, each take turns in the bathroom assembling this bomb. So it's some scary stuff. And the whole time Jericho Quinn's trying to figure out who the, who the bombers are, he gets mistaken for a terrorist by an off-duty air marshal, and it's, it's just hectic. But I'll tell you what, this guy Mark Cameron, he did a fantastic job. It, it, uh, it was like reading a book by Dan Brown. So I left a five-star review on Amazon, and in my review, I had mentioned any fan of Dan Brown who is sick of waiting for his next title to come out might want to check this dude out. I was also pretty amazed to see his background. He also writes as a uh, kind of a ghostwriter for Tom Clancy. He's, he's a New York Times bestseller of at least two books written under Tom Clancy's name. Plus another book, I forget what it was called, uh, I believe Fire and Fury or something like that. Look them up yourself because I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below to Day Zero. So check it out on Amazon, just click on the link. And that's going to be it for today. I'll just be clicking that one little link. i got to get my butt back to work. But you guys could have chosen a million different review stations to listen to. And for some reason you clicked on this one, I love the hell out of you guys for it. Have an awesome week, and we'll catch you guys next time.